Saga members, all members of the Saga fraternity to this webinar. And I, as you know that will be all of us, all of us will be very soon meeting during the Isaga 2021. Slightly more than one month is left. And uh, I'm sure that all of you will be there and we have a lot to learn from each other. In the meantime, when we could not hold this Isaga 2020 due to pandemic, we thought of starting this series and which has been, this series has been going on very successfully, very effectively and we have we had number of great speakers and presenters during these webinars. In that series today, we have uh, Miss, Mrs. Tikawa today, who will be uh, enlightening us about disaster prevention. As we know, disaster prevention is a must. It is very necessary. And this, uh, this pandemic has taught us that we need to be very, very sensitive to environment and ready to handle and manage the disaster. But before managing or before that happens, prevention is necessary. As it, say, it is said that prevention is better than cure. So if we can prevent it, why to experience such disasters, which, which we have seen and still pandemic is still there. And we don't know uh, how far it will be there. But at the same time, there is hope that uh, better days are going to return very soon. So all of not, not spending a lot of time between all of you and our great speaker, uh, Madam Kikawa. So I, I welcome her to this webinar and I welcome all of you to this learning experience that we will have. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Before inviting our speaker for the session, I would like to give their brief introduction to the audience. Dr. Toshiko Kikawa is a professor at Keio University, Tokyo, Japan. She is a social and organizational psychologist with expertise in simulation gaming and risk communication. She started her career as a game researcher and facilitator in 1989 and has designed many games for educational purpose since then. She's, she is also interested in training for improving skill com risk communication using gaming simulation. She has been the vice chair of Japanese Association of Simulation and Gaming since 2015 and was the executive board member of the International Simulation and Gaming Association, ISAGA, from 2012 to 2016. She is the co-editor-in-chief of the International Journal of Simulation and Gaming. It's great pleasure for all of us to have Dr. Toshiko Kikawa with us. I once again welcome you, ma'am, for sharing your knowledge with us. I now request Dr. Toshiko to start with the session. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you very much for introduction, Mrs. Padilla. I'm not sure I can pronounce your name properly. And thank you very much yes. for uh, Dr. Da for the welcome address and inviting me to this invaluable opportunity. And dear audience, I would like to start my presentation from now. So I will share my PowerPoint slide now. So today's talk is about disaster education using simulation gaming. So I would like to start my conclusion from my presentation of the of my presentation. I only talk about three points today. First, gamified approaches in Japan for disaster education. I will introduce some games which are used in the communities. 
And I would like to emphasize key prayers for disaster education are local people. And, uh, and third, Japanese bottom up culture may enhance the trend. That means that it's not, not a top down uh, education, but a bottom up kind of education. And I focus today the fact that game techniques with playful experiences experiences do have impacts on people's attitudes and behaviors from psychological perspectives. I mean, by motivating people intrinsically. By the way, my talk today is based on the chapter on this book. Thanks to Thomas, Thomas, I have a, I had an opportunity to contribute a chapter. So if you want to know about my talk better, please read this chapter. This is a kind of advertisement. So I would like to explain some historical and huge disasters, I mean earthquakes, that may, I think that may change the history or um, trend of the disaster education. First, in my opinion, the great Hanshin Awaji earthquake played a pivotal law in the emergency or the field of disaster education. It occurred in 1995 and it hit a very large city in the western area of Japan and the damage was so huge. I tried to explain where the Kobe is. Here is Tokyo where the Olympic game is held now. And here is Kobe. And I will show you some photos of the earthquake at that time, because it was almost 26 years ago. So some of you may not know the fact about the, the earthquake. For example, the sixth floor of the city hall crashed. This is a close-up photo. Unfortunately, one of the workers died here. So we have a lot of, um, how do you say, um, people roast in this earthquake. Also, there are a lot of fires broke out simultaneously. So if you see the, if you see Kobe city from the sky, the situation was as, uh, situation was like this. This is a photo of three days after the earthquake. As you can see, almost everything is crossed, burned and crossed. This is the photos after about one month. The people are recovering their normal Right. So I would explain the impacts of the earthquake here. More than 6,400 people dead and 15,000 people injured, which is important at, in, of this earthquake is that around 70% people or saved people 
saved by people in the community. Because there are a lot of people who were trapped and confined in the leakage. And there are shortage of the um, shortage of public health, like by city employees or firefighters. So after this earthquake, people in Kobe emphasized, emphasized that self-help and mutual help are very important in the face of disaster. So after the Kobe earthquake, self-help, mutual help, and public health has become a motto of disaster management and share in Japan. In addition to this, there are a lot of um, voluntary disaster management organizations have been established in communities. We call it Jishu Bosai Soshiki in Japanese. Jishu means voluntary, Bosai means disaster prevention, and Soshiki means organization. And also we had a great East Japan earthquake in 2011. Some of you may have a memory of this. It was a huge, it had a, a magnitude of 9.0 and killed more than 21,000 people. I would like to introduce the situation. This is a photo I took before the earthquake occurred. It was, it is Taro town, Iwata prefecture. Before the earthquake, several years before the earthquake, since the Taro town was hit by tsunami three times during the last hundred years, so the town is deemed to be well prepared to tsunamis. You can see the wall in the photo. This is a 10, 10 meter breakwater and has become a symbol of the town. And also, as you can see the photo, the roads are planned plan to be straight for smooth evacuation. This is the same time after 3-11 earthquake because 60 meter tsunami hit the town in 2011. Unfortunately, this is a consequence of the town. I took this photo from the break from the breakwater. Some breakwaters are also broken in other areas. Also in the cities, there are a lot of um, collapsed ships brought by tsunamis. You can see how big the ship is. And also um, in Minami Sanic town, there was a town hall, especially for disaster management. Unfortunately, tsunami also hit the town and approximately 40 people, including officials died because of tsunami. Also, we had a Fukushima disaster. For these experiences, we 
come to the conclusion that a, a kind of conclusion that the traditional educational traditional disaster prevention education is insufficient for preventing disasters or saving lives. One reason is that hazards of disaster differ from region to region. In the case of Great Hanji, Awaji case, because Kobe is a very big town, so vulnerabilities of urban area cause uh, casualties, the main cause of the casualties. In contrast, the great in the case of Great Eastern East Japan case, tsunami was the main cause of casualties. Sorry. Sorry. And also, in addition to the earthquakes, we have a lot of the natural disasters. For example, volcano eruptions, typhoons, floods, or landslides. As a result, each community requires custom-made educational methods because the disaster is different or hazard is different depending on community and con depending on the community. So each community requires custom-made educational methods and materials that reflect the possible situation in the community. From this perspective, I think game has an advantage as they offer flexibility for changing content and rules. From now on, I will explain, I will introduce two case study of the game. Probably the first game gained recognition in educa disaster education was disaster imagination game. The abbreviation is DIG. It was developed by Associate Professor Takeshi Komura in 1997. It is a workshop style simulation that uses local area map. I will show the photo of the dig. As you can see in the photo, the participant over overlay a transparent sheet on the map and participant identify the risks of their own communities. Unfortunately, you can't read, most of you can't read Japanese, but their the estimated or possible um, victims, numbers of victims on the map here. And also um, they play the game very seriously. In this game, I think the fidelity is a key because the reality, they feel the reality of the game by using a real area map. Disaster imagination game cannot be categorized, in my opinion, as a game in the strict sense of the term, but it opened the way for games as a part of disaster education. Because before this game, since the term game associated with play in Japanese, the game had been misconstrued as inappropriate for a disaster education because it deals with, uh, the disaster education deals with death and rights of the people. I will introduce a second case study. 
the name of the game is Crossroad, which my colleague and, and I developed in nine, uh, 2003. I will show you a brief history of Crossroad. It was originally designed as a tabletop exercise for disaster response training. And originally, the contents of the game was based on the interviews of the city employees of Kobe who experienced the great Hanshin Awaji earthquake. The interview started in 2003. That is very important for the game because it means there, the uh, interviewees have, uh, uh, have eight year reflective process of their experiences. It was officially released in, two, in 2004. And I will explain the flow of the game. The rule is very simple. We use a card for playing the game. On the card, there is episode based on the Kobe case. And players, each of the players had one yes and no card, and they decided to yes or no for this, for each situation. After all players decided to yes or no, they turn their cars face up. The game, the game is very simple. The majority opinion gets a point, which is sim uh, symbolized as blue zabuton. Zabuton is a kind of cushion, Japanese cushion. And please note that there is an additional way for players to gain point. That is this. Unique opinion gains a gold sabaton, a different color. And the impression of the color of gold is uh, very, how do you say, um, variable image. Players want to gain the gold sabaton. And after players get points, discussion follows. Pro, for example, I chose no because, or I chose yes because, and th throughout the discussion, some of the participants or players would like want to change the, their opinions based on the discussion. And also, they can share their exper experiences about disasters and knowledge. I will show you the example of the episode cards. You are in charge of the in charge of food at the shelter. Several hours have passed since the disaster. Reliable information was obtained that 3,000 people were evacuated at the site, but only 2,000 meals are secured currently. There are no further prospects at the moment. Do you distribute 2,000 meals to start with? So if you are a prayer, you will choose yes or no. And after you choose, cho choose yes or no, the discussion follows in a group, in a prayers. This is, as I told you before, the episode card is based on the fact, I mean, what happened, really happened in Kobe. So, after their discussion, the fact is facts are shown, presented to
to the players. So they may learn about, about what happened, really happened in Kobe after the game play. In this case, the difference between equality and needs was a major concern of this episode. This is the one of the um, shelter in Kobe. And people had followed a long queue by, uh, for getting their food. I would like, I want to introduce the second example of the episode card. You are a section manager in charge of relief supplies. A large amount of used clothes that are relief supplies are left, but there is no place to keep them within the government office. It, it will cost money to rent a warehouse. Do you ban them? Yes or no? Please think about it. The fact is that there are a lot of huge su relief surprise came to the uh, shelters. So it was, how do you say, uncontrollable at that moment. 430,000 packages of relief goods arrived within two months after the earthquake. To sort out these relief goods, 290,000 volunteers helped deal with and sort them out. And also a huge place, in this case, 22,400 square meters are necessary to keep them. So it's cheaper to burn them up. But of course, there is a discussion that burning them is very, how do you say, wasteful. I want to explain that main, two main characteristics of the original game, original rule of crossroad. First, we ask players to decide either yes or no. That is closed questions. And then we ask them, why do you think so? And how come? So closed question to open question. That facilitates players to disclose their opinions more smoothly. And secondly, there is a special rule, additional rule, that unique opinion gains gold zabaton, special points. The rule encourages participants to express their minority opinion in a safe environment. This is especially true for the Japanese players because Japanese, there is a kind of general tendency that Japanese people do not want to disclose their opinion in the public. But the rule naturally leads them to opinion disclosure. So in this case, we officially give them a kind of excuse, for example, I chose yes because I want a gold zabuto. So what I mean that the rule encourages participants to express that their minority opinion in the safe environment is that is that that is that that um, they can not say that. This is a real opinion. Just they 
want to express their real opinion, with exclude chooses to get on. So uh, due to the game, game rule is very simple. People rather than game designers that who are the us, we can create their own episode cards and thereby share their experiences or lessons learned from the disasters on a nationwide scale. For example, victims of great, the great, great East Japan earthquake in 2011 created new episode of card and shared the experience. I will explain it later. And also there are other how do you say, um, development in other countries. Do you know scale, small scale miners? Small scale miners is a kind of uh, independent miners who are not belong to the mining company, hired by the mining company, but works in them independently and they digs um, resources, natural resources, mainly gold. Can you see the holes on the walls? So like this, they go into the holes and dig gold, even if they, they are not so many. And in this area, Baguio in, Philipp in the Philippines is this um, earthquake prone area. So there is also a risk that the whole crust and die. There is a risk in the gold is extraction process like this. To extract gold, Small scale miners use mainly mercury or cyanide for efficient production of gold. They are not environmentally sound and they may impair their health. For example, mercury causes Minamata disease. So in a workshop in the ba in Baguio, we had a Crossroad episode creating workshop there. This is one example which um, small, one of the small scale miner made as a crossroad game. And after creating the cards, they played and shared the risk of mercury very seriously. Returning to the Japanese case, learning from the 311 disaster in Tohoku area. After the uh, 2011 disaster, there are a lot of crossroad episode cars were sent from the victims themselves. Because before the disaster earthquake occurred, many people in that area experienced the game already. I will show you one, a letter from a city employees send that. Sendai is one of the affected area by the tsunami and earthquake. He wrote this letter in 2013. He pointed out very important point, the effect of the line from gains. Although the nature of disaster was different in detail, the structure that is 
incessant decision making necessary for disaster responses was almost the same for him. So playing the game, in this case, cross rule, may contribute to his disaster um, management. In this sense, I am very happy to with it. And also, ordinary people, for example, in this case, people of Kobe facilitated okay, to share their experiences. And also we have uh, annual meetings once or twice a year of facilitators. This is a meeting held in Sendai two years after the huge earthquake. People from Sen Sendai, Tohoku area, talked about their 311 experiences. And people from Kobe share the experiences as well. And participants also share their 311 experiences on the table. And they create a new episode card based on the shared experiences. After creating new episode cards, presentation of new, uh, presentation, they presented uh, new episodes followed by explanation of the background information. So by doing this, person learn a share in the, uh, among the participants. We also had the online facilitator meeting in 2014. 1,300 people played crossroads simultaneously over Google Hangouts in 10 places in Japan. Also, in Mumbai, in 2015, we had a crossroad gay parade. I will introduce other games after this pioneering, these two pioneering games uh, get got a recognition in the disaster education field. This is Bosai Duck, the game Bosai Duck. Bosai means disaster pre prevent prevention. The game tells children how to react to different disasters. Different animals are assigned to different hazards. Therefore, the rule here is to take the corresponding action as soon as possible. This is a catfish. Catfish is a symbol of earthquake since it had been believed to cause earthquake in Japan. So if the children see the discard, they are asked to take a ducking pose, I mean, to protect their heads as soon as possible. Here is a photo of the game played in the kindergarten. As soon as they see the card, they take an action of that. Also, children will get an examination, a kind of test. After they learned with the game, children are tested if they appropriately learn the, the action with a simple earthquake machine.
can you see the people behind the children? As I told you before, community people join this kind of game activities. So with the children, elderly local community people, I mean, voluntary disaster prevention organization people learn how to react to disaster. But unfortunately, some elderly people have a relatively negative impression the term gay because they associated the term gay with play. So therefore, they are, some of them are reluctant to play the game. So the same game was converted to health exercise for elderly people by the local people. When the children watch the elderly people perform the exercise, they wanted they want to play the same exercise. So I would say here you can see the recursive learning process by the game, and the game is still evolving in the community. Also, some NPOs introduce game elements to disaster drills. Drill. For example, Plus at one of the leading NPOs founded after the great Hanshin Awaji earthquake promotes workshops. The Plus Art combines disaster education with games. For this photo shows the way to learn fire ex how to use fire extinguishers. Lastly, I would emphasize on another example of the Japanese book bottom up culture that may enhance the trend of this. Um, bottom-up local people's culture. I'd like to point out that Japanese bottom-up culture may contribute to the rise of gamified approach in disaster prevention and awareness. I'd like to show the case of, one case of uh, the game market I think it is a good example. It is the largest tabletop game event in Japan. Before the COVID-19, it was held three times annually, two in Tokyo, one in Osaka. For example, in 19, uh, two, 2019, over 25,000 participants across two days in the spring Tokyo market. I would, like, I would like to emphasize that exhibitors are mostly independent game designers. I mean, ordinary people, they are not professionals. For example, 350 out of 450 four exhibitors of the first day of the Tokyo game market in 2018 were independent game designer, I mean, normal people. We have the tradition of comic market, comic. There is a great growth that this is a good, this is also a grassroots event. And the game market was founded by an elementary school teacher. And after several years, this event became so huge. You can see along too, I think, in the photo. After, at the end of the 
if room Q build entrance. The place is like here. As I mentioned earlier, that ordinary people design the game and sell them. Games so that the game market cover an enormous variety of topics. So various related, uh, various disaster related games are regularly developed and sold because we are very much interested in disasters. Uh, this is another photo of the game market. Also, this is also another. I would like to show some of the examples of the games. These games are related to health and viruses. Print shop that has health groups at the at the comic 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 market comic and already have experience in small scale publishing, have supported independent designers publish games at the game market. I'll show you one disaster central game. With respect to disaster related games, the main difference between games developed by local people and these developed by independent designers is a sophistication of the game, game rule. Even if independent designers are ordinary people. In this sense, the game are used as a vehicle for dis disseminating known facts and accurate, accurate inf information about disasters for the local people. But Independent designers give a kind of a new view, perspective or framework for interpreting the disaster education, disaster management. So disaster education using simulation, simulation again. The general bottom-up culture and volunteer disaster prevention organization play important roles in disaster education. Not only the game themselves, but also the whole running system using games have con contributed to the disaster prevention knowledge and increased public awareness. I'd like to repeat three key points of my pre today's presentation. Game five approaches in Japan are very privacy. And the main players for disaster education are local people. And probably Japanese general bottom up culture may enhance the trend. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Han, for the wonderful session. On our request, all panel members to please ask their questions. We have, and I request participants to write their questions in the Q and A tab. May I ask a question, please? Uh, Madam Tachiko, uh, uh, first I must tell you that I was in Kobe before the earthquake happened. So uh, it it uh, it was uh, a very disastrous moment for me also because I stayed for one year. Uh, after that disaster, uh, you didn't have an earthquake of uh, you know, such a magnitude again. Is that right? Yeah, but unfortunately, these earthquakes are not the last earthquakes we will have. 
Yeah. There are huge earthquakes are expected to occur in the very near future. I mean, in 20 years or in 30 years. So we have to be well prepared again. Have they made it uh, compulsory now in Kobe University to, to, to take a course in uh, disaster management for all I, the master, uh, students? I, yeah, I don't have a direct connection to them, but I have a indirect, some indirect connection with them. And also um, there are a lot of disaster education centers uh, or school in Kobe after 90, um, 1995 disaster earthquake. So if you come to Japan again, please learn the aftermath of the, uh, the earthquake by visiting the museum or watching the classes for the disaster education, please. Yeah, sure. Uh, as to the question from the audience, most, there are least, uh, there are online games related to disaster management, but unfortunately, Japanese society is old, and especially in the local community is old. I mean, we have an aged society. So it is difficult for them to learn from the online games. Online games are for the Rather than, uh, rather for the relatively younger generation, I, in my opinion. Ah, the second question is: Are the games part a part of instruction, or it is a separate mandate? No. Um, some of the uh, schools or universities included the games in the disaster education course, but the game, the game I introduced today are sold in the shop. So it is not mandatory. The, the playing the games are not mandatory. They are played in local communities mainly. What are the evacuation methods which you use to it? Education. I don't clearly understand the, the third question. What are the evacuation methods which you use to reduce the losses? Do you mean the, uh, to run as fast as possible? And is, shall do I answer the question? Your question? Uh, no, Toshiko, I'll explain yeah. that. What uh, the questioner wants to know is yeah. what kind of uh, methods you have. Uh, if by evacuation, we are talking about evacuation after an earthquake. The questioner wants to know what evacuation methods you use, that is to get people out of uh, the damaged area, the rubble, as we call it. What do you mean? I Sorry, I, I, I cannot hear you clearly. Uh, what methods do you use to get people from outside the damaged area? Suppose there are people caught under a broken building. How do you get people outside? Uh, how, do you get them safe? Out of, how do you extricate them from the building? That's what... Uh, mainly, mainly by hand. Yeah. That's because awesome. it is very dangerous to use uh, machines in that situation especially by the ordinary people. Uh, Mr. Samuel wants to know, how effective are the old school methods of learning through games? Um, I know one of the high school in 
Kobe proposed uh, a kind of disaster education game, a course, education course, by using games for various subjects. So there, I, I'm sure that there are, there is, there is. Um, uh, probably the fifth question, how effective are old school methods running through games? Um, well, what you meant yes. was any old methods that you've been using, it does not really refer to a school. What it probably means is how are the old methods of learning? Of course, uh, uh, they run uh, knowledge about, uh, for example, geography or ge geometry. That is a very basic uh, knowledge about the disaster. But to flexibly, flexibly react the disaster or hazard, we have to have their own, um, our own how do you say, um, sense of uh, autonomy or sense of their own theory, my, their, my, our own theory for the disaster management. In this sense, game is very effective. So I don't deny that lecture style um, education is worthless for disaster education. But based on this, we have to be more intrinsically motivated and autonomous kind of education for all generation people. So, um, as Japan, I wonder if situation or youth design city activity. Um, I think a uh, question from Lavinish Sai. Um, I am not in the position of the uh, answering this question. Probably Hidehiko Kanegai is. Uh, specialist of the urban design, urban design. So he may answer this question for me. Dr. Kanaya, can you? Yes, the answer is yes. Uh, not only for Japanese uh, architecture uh, calculation, especially for the structure engineering. Uh, everything of the artificial uh, structures, uh, including buildings, uh, bridges, and uh, some other infrastructures should be uh, a minimum uh, regulation for the structure uh, resistance uh, parameters, but and also the all of the Japanese uh, schools, school buildings should over uh, multiplied by one point two or one point two five uh, of the structure uh, resistance should be. That mean to the and also the all of the elementary school and the junior high school and the school's uh, buildings uh, have already finished for the uh, retrofitting of uh, those kind of the uh, uh, anti-shaking uh, structures. University is not <laughs> achieved yet all, but uh, uh, that mean to the, in, uh, uh, for the calculation of the everything of the uh, structures uh, should be 
uh, checked and uh, getting a test. And also for the designing uh, after 1982, uh, three, I forgot, uh, all of the structure should be uh, before uh, construction. It should be uh, calculated as mean as the same of the meaning of the simulations should be passed. Then uh, it's a very common thing. And recently, the materials and parts uh, didn't enough for the, those resistance. Uh, then, uh, for instance, recently cases, uh, uh, skyscraper building, uh, totally 46 uh, layers building is now uh, removing all of the residents. The building was just constructed five years ago, but uh, and shaking shock absorber uh, was uh, miss uh, construction. Then they destroy. They should destroy the building, and also uh, the new building would be rebuilt. It, it's very high, high, high re <laughs> uh, level of uh, simulations uh, usually using. Yes, it's a very common thing. Sorry. In addition to his comment. All schools have to have uh, disaster drills, drills once a month. It's mandatory. So disaster education is very common for us. And I would like to answer the question from um, Jayadevan Jaya PCI. I'm sorry, I cannot pronounce your name appropriately. Uh, his question is goes up to the outcome of the discussion or of an opinion by a, an individual. This is a very important question because the subtone is given up immediately after the party's prayer show the opinion. So after the discussion, they may change, can, they can change opinions, but the point is or he escaped constant. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, due to time constraint, yeah. we cannot take all the questions. So uh, we can end the question answer session. So uh, I, must, uh, I must uh, comment that uh, it has been a very good session. Yes, and uh, yes, very practical. We are all enjoyed. One thing is common between um, uh, her and me is the background of psychology. Yeah, I have thoroughly enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you very and, much. And uh, as we know, we are only 43 days away from Isaga 2021. So we are looking for the day 6th of September. So from 6th of September to 10th of September, all of us will be together on all the days. So um, if anybody wants to make any contribution in terms of organizing workshops or uh, any kind of session or making presentations, they can get in touch with us as early as possible. Thank you. Over to the uh, Rupali. Thank you, sir. And thank you, ma'am. It was really a wonderful, knowledgeable session, and you have discussed very well about those who have not registered so far. Please uh, hurry up and register. Yeah, Rupali. Thank you. Uh, can I? Yeah, I have to send the proposal to the conference. Yeah. So thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Can I have a uh, last remarks? I mean, sure. I want to thank uh, all the panelists and especially for the ISA 2021 team and also the audience today. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. I now request founder of Mentis, Dr. Vinod Damdikar, sir, to propose words of thanks. Thank you, Rupali. Toshiko, uh, that was a very good exposure into uh, a field of activity which we, uh, probably the rest of the world, is not very uh, familiar with. Disasters like earthquakes and uh, I think you had tsunamis as well. And the preparation that you make via as you say, regular every monthly and exercise to get ready for uh, damage and uh, losses 
I think it's phenomenal. Uh, we have disasters, of course. We have uh, landslide, cloud bursts, and once in a while, financial disasters, which are man-made. But uh, that is uh, beyond the scope of uh, this syllabus as it is today. Um, thank you. You woke us up to the idea that uh, uh, we can understand the disasters and get ready for disasters far better through the use of simulations and games. Um, we have today uh, also three or four uh, first-time visitors, debutants to uh, this webinar series. Um, we have Maria uh, Laura Angelini, and we have two future speakers, like uh, we have Dr. Alexander Schiller, who will be speaking to us on the 7th of August. And then there's uh, JB, where's JB? JB, where are you? Oh, there you are. Uh, there is Javahar uh, uh, Bhalla from Australia. Uh, is there somewhere? I can't see his face. Okay. I'm here, but not sorry. I was, uh, I had to uh, <laughs> close the thing. <laughs> okay. Just raise your hand so that we know, everybody knows who you are. I know who you are. And uh, somewhere to my left is uh, Alexander Schiller. Alex, please raise your hand. Alex is on a holiday and he'll be speaking to us on the 7th of August. Uh, JB will be speaking to us on the 14th of August. Um, we are eagerly, and both of them are from uh, two ends of the world, just as uh, uh, Tokyo is far away. Uh, Alex will be speaking from his holiday resort somewhere in Germany, and uh, JB is somewhere in Victoria or uh, I don't know where. Uh, I think, uh, I hope all of you will be present at that day uh, on both the days. Uh, we are about to uh, culminate a series of webinars on the widest of variety of topics ever. And we don't want to miss out on these two. Uh, we would like to thank all of you, uh, Dr. Toshiko in particular for having made that uh, uh, space and time for us. Uh, we hope that all of you and many more of you, your friends, et cetera, will come and participate in the ISAGA 2021 uh, conference. We were planning to have this conference last year. We missed it because of the, our own disaster that is uh, COVID-19. And I hope that we can all see of you at least uh, in an online space with your contributions. Papers, posters, workshops, please, please, please bring them on. Thank you. We want to be able to shake hands with you at least in an electronic space. Thank you. Good day. Let's see you again on the 7th of August. Thank you for everybody at the university for having made this off, uh, happen. We see others as well. I see Dr. Ramesh Sharma, despite his busy schedule, he appears here for some more, some minutes out here, and then he goes out and runs another webinar somewhere or a WhatsApp session somewhere else. He's too busy, but he attends all the same. Thank you all. Thanks, Ray. Have a good day. Thank you, sir. Have a good Thank weekend. You. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you all for being with us for the webinar. See you soon. For Thank you, Mr. Shiko. See you again. I request all the participants to please fill the feedback form as mentioned in the chat box. For the Alex and JB, uh, you will get your emails in about a couple of days, maybe Monday, Tuesday. No problems. Thanks a lot. Uh, Enjoy the session. Thank you. Thank you for sure. everything. Thank you. Yes. Okay, yes. bye bye, Tom. I'm going to wait for you as well. <laughs> Thank you for your help. Thank you. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you.